Hey, uh, my name's Joe Glassman. Some of you know me, but whether you do or not, I just wanted to take this moment at Hanukkah to say a purely personal thank you to every single person out there who actively resisted the anti-Semitism of Corbyn and the Labour Party and say, well done, Mazel Tov. Um, just to put me into context, if you don't know, I'm a volunteer at Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, where I head the political investigations team, which, among other things, was responsible for our successful submission to the AHRC. But today, I'm not speaking in that role. I'm just speaking as one more person who volunteered like you, because the Hanukkah miracle has happened. The beast is slain, uh, and I have an urge to express my love and personal gratitude to every single person, some of whom I've never met, who've played their part and wish them a Hanukkah or maybe Chrismaka Sameach. <clears throat> I did think of making a list of everyone to thank, but well, I noticed a few weeks back that a Twitter account called Shana Madel tried to compile one, which resulted in the longest thread of Bruegus over who was left out. As one activist, David Toob, said in it, this is the most Jewish thread ever. It reminds me that I once thought of creating a Jewish Facebook app that instead of sending you congratulations for staying friends with people would do the opposite, like congratulations, you haven't spoken to Jessica for 14 weeks. This has been a real Jewish geschäft, a business where there are still people out there not talking to each other uh, uh, I've loved the fact that we've even made our non-Jewish allies a bit more disputatious. And yet, despite all that, every single day, we rolled up our sleeves and fought for the same cause. Kol HaKavod, I take my hat off to all of you. You're all people who've had a natural and unshakable moral understanding of what needed to be done. And we all know our non-Jewish allies deserve extra thanks. We stood up for our community, you stood up because it was the right thing to do. And then there are also the quiet activists, certainly numbered in my amazing team at CAA, who are the modest people who've applied themselves with the same determination as any of us, but who have never sought public plaudits. And no Corbynistas, they're not secret Mossad spies. They're just ordinary people, fantastic people. And Hanukkah is the perfect time to celebrate our victory because to me, Corbyn and Hanukkah are a comedy combo. The sainted Jeremy is always pictured lighting the Hanukkah candles. And you really do wonder if anyone bothered to tell him that this is a two millennium old celebration of a Jewish military victory to re-establish Jewish national and religious sovereignty in Jerusalem. I wouldn't have thought that was Jezza's favorite party invite, but hey, Jewish studies may be not his forte. And I don't think the miracle of Hanukkah was so much about the oil. I think the real miracle was that we were free to be Jews again. And if you've got two more minutes to listen to Rabbi Joe's drosha, I'll tell you why. You see, Academic historians of Hanukkah tell a slightly different story. They tell the story of a dominant power trying to force their universal worldview on Jews. Back then it was gyms, the body beautiful, Olympic games, demigod myths. Here's the twist. Up in Jerusalem, there were the favoured Jews who were co-opted, who wanted in, learning to wrestle naked in a desecrated Jewish temple. The writer Dara Horn calls them the cool Jews, who wanted to assimilate so badly, it said they even tried to reverse their circumcisions. Oof, Jeremy Corbyn. This is the type of anti-Semitism where Jewish culture is attacked first and co-opts Jews as a weapon. It was replicated by Christianity, by Marxism. In the Soviet version, there was Yevsektia, where atheist Marxist Jews were sent to undermine Jewish communities as well. Think of it as Jewish voice for Stalin. Because a century later, the Labour Party set up a perfect replica in Jewish voice for Labour to undermine us in the very same way, except now in TV studios. 
yeah, we've had to deal with those cool Greeks, young Corbinista Jewish outriders, desperate decircumcisers who tried to cast people like me, who used to vote Labour, as some kind of right-wing Trump fanatics, robbing the poor of a better future. And just before the election dawn, The Guardian wrote a truly dark editorial saying that despite the shameful anti-Semitism, that Labour remained indispensable to progressive politics. As the historian Tom Holland explained at the Together Against Anti-Semitism rally, Christianity made it possible to be both a good Christian and someone who hated Jews. Now it seems that in modern Britain, you can be a good progressive and hate Jews. So Corbyn was not Haman or Hitler. He was Antiochus, the extremely humorless. And we defeated him. And really, if we could see off the might of ancient Greece, it's not surprising we could see off what Stephen Daisley called a rancid Tony Benn revival act. Inevitably, those Greeks, as they did then, will come back for Jerusalem. So none of us should be ready to beat our swords into plowshares just yet. But Maccabees, we did it. By word and deed, by protest and tweet, by our spies and intel, by our fab celebrities and our anonymous volunteers, by pleading, by rigorous research and gathering of evidence, by incredible video making, by interminable hours coming through tweets, by prayer, by dramatic speeches and street protests, by lorries carrying huge billboards, by writing and shouting and taking the mick out of the most humorless bunch of people this country's politics have ever made us suffer. And can I finish? By sheer bloody mindedness, we metaphorically took the temple back. And if Jerusalem is builded here in England's green and pleasant land, then just for now at least, we have our Jerusalem back. Maccabees at ease. They tried to kill us, we won, let's eat. And to quote our other Jewish festival of liberation, not leaning too far to the left, the Chaim. <laughs>